Rapture. It's the 1950s. We're under the ocean and all doing grand. Swell, really? Hey, watch out, you big palooka. Hey, he just maintains the pipes around here. Don't worry about that, Tin Man. The eggheads around here develop these things called plasmids. Seems like you can do just about anything with plasmids. They alter your, uh, whatchamacallit, genes. So you can slim down to get that cute broad you like, eh? <laughs> All you gotta do is inject this extremely safe syringe right here, and, uh... Uh-oh! Wait a second! Am I in one of those utopia gone wrong stories? Nobody told me this could happen! I never finished 1984! Ah, Bioshock. Bioshock is a first-person shooter released in 2007. It takes place in the underwater dystopia of Rapture, which, depending on who you ask, was actually running perfectly fine for like a decade until the people the person you asked about it dislikes had to go and ruin it. Now it's a mess. A mess that you get to now wade through and explore. You know, like urban exploration, where people romanticize crumbling nightmare buildings, infested with drugged up squatters, who think their next hit will give them magic powers. But in Bioshock, injecting the contents of random needles you find actually does give you magic powers. Like lightning bolt, funny colored orb, and bees! I shouldn't have to say much more to convince you that it's a wonderful game, but I'm going to. Allow me to guide you through Bioshock. I'll be the Virgil to your Dante in this watery hell. A watery hell that I'm very fond of. I love Bioshock. You should play it, and I want to tell you why. The story of Bioshock begins with another shock game, System Shock, and a man named Ken Levine. Most of you out there over the age of 25 don't need me to tell you how good the System Shock games are and about their development, but allow me to summarize it for the convenience of everybody else. Mr. Ken Levine was the designer for the game System Shock 2, and he wanted to make a sequel. Now, the System Shock games would receive high critical acclaim, from YouTubers in about 20 years, but would never make any money at all and never sold a single copy. So Mr. Levine thought to himself, what if I make System Shock again, but this time I don't call it System Shock and maybe then people will buy the game. And guess what? It worked. He swapped around System for Bio and the three for nothing. And the game sold like crazy. Critics at the time described it as having an inescapable atmosphere and an inconceivably great plot. The Los Angeles Times said, It does something no other game has done to date. It really makes you feel. Another famous critic of the time, Teenage Vera, sitting in his room drinking a Capri Sun and listening to Limp Bizkit said, It's like Halo, except you can throw bees at people. Frickin' beast, dude! Now, I don't know about it being the first game to make you feel, but Bioshock's premise, story, and world building truly are some of its strongest assets. Before I cover the premise and the world building, quick side note for this video. I played the game live on this channel some time ago. The original, unremastered version, with no mods or graphical fixes or bug fixes or anything. As one commenter put it, raw dog in it. My specialty. So when you see this footage, it's me playing, where I never make a mistake and never die once. Alternatively, when you see this footage, this is the the remastered edition. I've wanted footage of the remaster for this video, but I was busy with other things, so I made this floor gremlin record it for me. So if you see a lot of dying, or not being able to aim, or just generally being bad, it's because she's playing and this isn't Stardew Valley. Got it? Okay, great, moving on. The game begins with you, John Bioshock. Sorry, Jack Bioshock. Reminiscing on a plane about being mama and dad as special little boy who loves crashing into the ocean from above. When suddenly your airplane and crashes into the ocean from above. You swim out of the wreckage, you paddle around a little bit, and you find an entrance to a secret underwater city. You know, the one that starts with A and rhymes with Atlantis. Yes, that's right, Rapture. It's called Rapture. I'm not very good at rhyming or spelling. Rapture may be an underwater city, but it is a little different than Atlantis. For one, there are no mermaids, just libertarians. Basically, around the 1940s, every single libertarian in America decided to form a big group. And this collective of anti-collectivists said to themselves, Hey, we all hate the U.S. government and the Vatican and the USSR. Let's leave and make our own society. Now, where they went wrong was by saying, I know, let's go make our society under the ocean. Listen, I might be a little biased. I hate deep sea shit. <laughs> but the ocean? Why? 
Canada is right there. Airdrop three killdozers and one guy with a Glock into Toronto and you'll make it into an independent city-state in an afternoon. Regardless, out of the desire to escape petty morality and government control, the undersea utopia of Rapture was born. Ruled not by a big king with a trident, but by a big Andrew Ryan who likes sweaty brows and golf. The man himself gives you, an incoming citizen of Rapture, a message by video as you descend via your submarine pod into the city. Andrew Ryan talks to you about Rapture, his ideals, the principles, the merits of sweat, fuck the US government, the church, and the commies, etc, etc. Then you get to see Rapture for yourself. The architecture is pleasant, with lights and signs of entertainment spots to enjoy. But once the pod descends into its building and you're welcomed into Rapture, you have a chance to look around and see the present damage. Rapture? is a run-down apocalyptic nightmare. Wait a minute, a utopia going wrong? Who could have predicted that would happen? But how did Rapture end up like this? Well, Bioshock is directly inspired by Ken Levine's readings. That might give you an idea. George Orwell, famous author of 1984, for example, is one major influence. But Bioshock draws even more inspiration from another author, a woman named Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand and her philosophy, called objectivism, heavily influenced Bioshock's world and characters. Understanding it can help you understand the game. I'm going to explain it for you all briefly in the only way I know how. Purely from memory with 100% accuracy and no fact checking needed. Ayn Rand established her philosophy by writing two books her entire life and absolutely nothing else, I'm sure. These books are called Fountain Shrugged and The Atlas Head. Simply put, objectivism is individuality above all else. The free will and skill of a man to set his own course, to chart his own destiny so long as he has the willpower to do so, and with no body and no government entity getting in his way. These are the values of Andrew Ryan, the founder and de facto king of Rapture, and Bioshock's primary antagonist. city where the artist would not be a censor. Where the scientists would not be bound by petty morality. Where the great would not be constrained by the small. And with the sweat of your brow, rapture can become your city as well. But as Andrew Ryan's nemesis, Frank Fontaine, put it, These sad saps. They come to rapture thinking they're gonna be captains of industry. But they all forget that somebody's gotta scrub the toilets. Exploring audio diaries just like this one will give you a better idea of how Rapture came to be this way. And there are many different ways of interpreting it. Those of you who care can argue about it in the comments section. But Varrock, what is your interpretation of it? Now, this may strike some viewers as harsh, but I believe everyone involved in this story should die. Shortly after arriving and being welcomed by fire and fury, you're greeted by the Irishman, Atlas. I'm Atlas. I aim to keep you alive. He's going to help you navigate this place and help you survive, so long as you also help find his family along the way. He claims that Andrew Ryan has captured his enormous Catholic family, his giant wife and 37 Irish children, and he can only find them with your assistance. Didn't you just fall into the ocean from a giant airliner with a bunch of people? Wouldn't somebody look into that? Can't you just go sit up by the lighthouse, wait for help? Well, good point, my dear viewer, but Atlas did just ask us for help, and he asked really nicely. So you adventure forward, find a wrench, smack some people, immerse yourself. You know, take in the sights and sounds. Rummage through the aftermath of a New Year's party. Listen to audio tapes to figure out what the people of Rapture thought about their lives. Sneak through the bathroom and pick up used needles. Get assaulted verbally and physically by the entire homeless population of California. Ah, Rapture. Since we're talking about getting immersed, let me mention the music for a moment. I'm sure many of you Zoomers out there have played Fallout 4 before and listened to the in-game radio and thought to yourself, Wow, this music is great! I'm so glad that Fallout 4 invented old music. This is obviously incorrect. 
If you were a little bit older, you'd know it was actually Bioshock that invented old music. That's right, nobody listened to these records before Bioshock came out. How do I know that? Just trust me, bro, my dad works at music. <laughs> anyway, Rapture has a drug problem. The drug of choice in Rapture is a gene-altering substance called Adam concentrated into injections known as plasmids. Plasmids were introduced to Rapture as a way of improving people's lives. Much like how Coca-Cola used to be marketed as a patent medicine with the fun stuff in it. Bioshock encourages you to pick up any free drugs you find and inject them to see what happens. Which fortunately for you, John Jack Bioshock, results in you getting fantastical powers like shooting lightning from your hands and telekinesis. Some other people don't take it as well. When you pick up a new plasmid, a little old-timey advertisement plays for it explaining its use. And interestingly, nearly every single one of them now advertises itself as a weapon. This could mostly be for the player's sake and non-diegetic, but it also works as a result of the advertising changing during the Rapture Civil War. After all, people didn't need plasmids for household tasks anymore. They needed them so they could telekinetically brain other people with a hammer. Freeze your enemies. Shatter them into a thousand pieces. <laughs> Wife trying to hit you with a rolling pin? Kill her! <laughs> Taking plasmids is known as splicing, and most of the inhabitants of Rapture, the ones who survived and are typically heavy atom abusers, are known as splicers. Let them be a warning. Too much of the stuff ruins your brain and body, getting you so deformed that you start wearing animal masks to hide your shame. It's one thing to be addicted to Adam and lighting it up on a public park bench. It's another thing to be a furry. You don't want to be both. Splicers are the most common enemy of Rapture, and they will attack you on sight. Some prefer the simplicity of a lead pipe. Others use guns. Some, called Houdini splicers, teleport around and sling fireballs at you. The most deranged of all call themselves spider splicers and crawl around on walls with hooks. Anyway, walk around a bit and Atlas will tell you to be quiet. Put away your gun. He needs to introduce to you the marketable plushies of the series. The Big Daddy and Little Sister. Basically, little sisters have atom-producing sea slugs for organs, and they harvest even more atom from corpses lying around Rapture. Of course, though, Rapture is not a safe place for a kid, and everybody needs that atom for their fix. So a little sister is like a walking gold mine to the average plasmid junkie, which is what the large father is for. Little sisters gather atom, and big daddies protect them. Very effectively, I might add. <laughs> If I haven't mentioned it yet, plasmids are used by spending Eve. Basically mana. You restore it via certain consumables you can find around the area, or Eve hypos that you can carry with you. Buy ammo, health kits, Eve hypos, and any other miscellaneous bullshit at vending machines. And you can upgrade weapons at your local 1776 dispensary. God bless. But upgrades to your health, your Eve, your plasmids, basically any and all libertarian magic bullshit that involves splicing your genetics is purchased with Adam at a store called a Gatherer's Garden. You'll see a lot more of these machines and things as we enter the first real level of your journey, the Medical Pavilion. Try hacking the machines around you for all sorts of benefits. You can hack vending machines to get cheaper prices, hack turrets to make them fight for you, things like that. The actual hacking is done by what some people consider to be the best part of the game, and what others consider to be the worst. I've met people who play Bioshock just to play this hacking minigame and consider the combat sections in between to be interrupting the real gameplay. You ready for it? The hacking is done via... A 2007 era new grounds flash game, baby! Whoa! Water goes through the tubes, yeah! Your objective in this minigame is to get the water from one end to the other without it hitting a dead end or touching an alarm. If you can do that, the machine will be under your control. Listen, personally, I love this stupid little minigame. It reminds me of a Dexter's Lab CD-ROM game I played as a small Verrockling. Look, back in my day, we didn't have things like smartphones, or flip phones, or TVs, or books, or movies, or music. All we had for entertainment was 
CD-ROMs. So if you wanted to have fun, you'd have to walk to the GameStop in your local strip mall, uphill both ways in the snow, and it was also hot for some reason. Walk up to the register, see the cute goth girl running it, drop all the spaghetti out of your pockets, which was the style at the time. Buy your game and take it home. Run into all those emo chicks on the way back, clogging up the mall's hallways near the Hot Topic and the Spencers. You'd look at them, drop more spaghetti out of your pockets, which was the style at the time. Look, if you haven't played Bioshock before, I really want you to go play it. That's the whole point of this video. It's got all sorts of weapons and plasmids to find, choices to make, and atmosphere and story to experience. The climax of the story is especially iconic, and if you haven't heard of it before, or if you don't know what happens, I really encourage you to see it for yourself. Bioshock is a wonderful game. I highly recommend it. Hey there! Thanks for watching to the end of the video. This one was a long time coming. I have a big soft spot for this game. Thank you all for watching, and a special thank you to my shady cabal of Vidya elites and connoisseurs. Your blood money funds production of these videos. Thanks to you guys, more videos to come. And ones I think you'll enjoy. Check out the side channel, Verrock2, if you're interested in some silly nonsense. Sillier than this, anyway. And those of you who are particularly attentive may have noticed me streaming once in a while on this channel. Played through XCOM 2 recently, that was a lot of fun. Check out the VOD channel to see those past streams. If you want to catch me live, well, turn on the bell and maybe pray to a deity of your choice. Oh, and uh, here's some fan art from my time playing those XCOM streams, which uh, appears to be me getting, uh... Captured by a viper. Very nice. Thank you for that. I'm just gonna save that right into my uh, folder over here. Anyway, more to come very soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. I love you all very much. Thanks again, and see you next time.